Hello, I'm Patty Simpson with Simpson Math. In this video, we're going to look at the range of some functions. So we looked at the domain in some previous videos where the domain told us about the input of our functions and the range just tells us about the output values that um, a function has. So remember that our output is our y values. So really we are looking at those y values of our functions, our output values. We're just gonna look and our output values are our y values. Um, we think about this y axis here. So we're looking from um, the bottom or to the top, or we're looking vertically at our function. So think about our outputs and let's just see if I pick an output like negative five and I look at that negative five, I, there was an input there on my graph at positive five. So there is a point or a place on my graph where I had an output at negative five. In fact, there were two of them because there's another one on this side too. So um, what about at negative one? Well, at negative one, there's also an, out, uh, an input. This is my output value is a negative one. Well, my, we inputted an x value there, and we inputted an x value here, and we inputted this, you know, about one, negative one and a half, and about um, negative four and a half to, those were our input values. So in this case, we've got output values, or we've got y values. This tells me it goes on and on forever and ever and ever down to, the, uh, to negative infinity. So all the way from negative infinity, all the way up to two, there's an output value. But notice that there's nothing larger than that. We didn't get any y values that were larger than two. So our range is our y values have to be smaller, are smaller or equal to a positive two. Or in set builder notation, because we're talking about our range or our y values, I'm gonna put a y to let us know that we're talking about those y values. And then I'm gonna say, y can be anything, it can be any old real number, it just has to be smaller, less than, or equal to, Two. So this is called set builder notation. In integral notation, we start with our smallest value. Well, we have out inputs all the way um, down, so smaller and smaller. So from negative infinity all the way up to our biggest value there is at positive two. And we put a bracket here to let us know that two is included, that there is a point there where my y value is two. So there's the range of this function. My range of this function, again, I'm looking at those y values. Well, the smallest y value, or the first time I see an output, is where my y is at negative three. So that's gonna be my smallest va uh, y value. Then I can pick, um, say, uh, zero, there are, two points on my graph where y is zero. What about at two? There are two points in my graph where y is two. What about at um, four? Even though this side stopped, there is still a point on my graph where y is four. And in fact, this keeps going on forever and ever. So my y values, there's going to be points on my graph for all of the y values there um, all the way up. So the, on my y values, um, y is bigger than or equal to, well, the smallest thing it was was negative three. So then in set builder notation, because I'm talking about my y's, I say y such that y now over here, I keep putting this y as an element of the real numbers because we're only looking at real numbers. 
But because in this class in college algebra, we're keeping it real, we're only looking at real numbers, you don't have to put that part in there. We can just say y is greater than or equal to negative 3. Either way, you can do it with that in there or without it. Then in interval notation, and by, by the way, it's, it is, there is a spot there. There is a point. There is an output there. So therefore, we use the equal sign. In interval notation, because there is, it is included, there is a point there, we put a bracket. It goes from negative 3, and then it just goes up forever and ever and ever, so it goes on to infinity. So in set builder notation, y is greater than or equal to negative 3, and in interval notation, y can be anything from negative 3 up to infinity. Here, again, I'm looking at those y values, so I'm coming from the bottom up, and the smallest y value, there's no output here on my graph, there's no points here. The smallest y value there is at negative 4. So y is um, between negative 4. Notice that at negative 4, it doesn't go up forever and ever. There's no arrow there that it's going to go on forever and ever. It does stop. There's no output up here. There's no points on my graph. So the largest thing that my y value is, is at 3. So my y is between negative 4 and 3. Notice though that this negative 4 is included. It has a point there. Whereas 3 is not included. We get really, really close to it. You know what? 2.9, We're getting really close to 3, but we never make it there to my y value of 3. So I'm going to say where negative 4 is included. So it's between negative 4 and 3, but we have to include that negative 4 also. In set builder notation, I'm talking about my y's. And y is everything in between there. I got outputs everywhere in between there. And y is greater than this negative 4, but smaller than the 3. And this symbol, this equal to, lets me know that it, it can be equal to negative 4. There is an output there where y is equal to negative 4. In interval notation, the smallest number is negative 4. The largest number here is 3. My 4 is included, so I use that bracket, where my 3 is not. That open circle lets me know that there's not an output there where y is 3. So it's not included, so we use the parentheses. One last one. My y values here, again, I'm going to look from the bottom up. My y values go down all the way down to negative infinity. And then as I climb up, there are outputs, there are points on the graph for every one of my y values. And even here at 1, there's not an output here, but there is an output here. There is an output on that graph there where y equals 1. There's a point right here. So therefore, it, it can be anything from negative infinity to all the way up to positive infinity. Or my y can be anything. I'm going to have a point on my graph at any of those y values. So y is any real number. Or in set builder notation, we say y such that y is an element of our real numbers. There it is in set builder notation. Or in integral notation, I go from negative infinity to positive infinity. It can be anything in between there. So there's our range written in both set builder notation and interval notation. And range is just the um, values that y can be within a function. Math made simple at Simpson Math. Thanks for watching.